drywall was developed in the late 1940s. It's been the most popular interior wall and ceiling finish since the 1960s. Not much has changed since then in the way drywall finishing is done. Mixing, mudding, taping, embedding, pole sanding, and hand sanding. Thousands of drywall finishers do these tasks around the country every day. Recently, this craft has seen some technological innovation. The vacuum sander, currently costing between $200 and $1,200, depending on the configuration. A typical vacuum sander uses conventional sanding screens. The sander attaches to a hose connected to a vacuum canister. The canister is lined with a special filter or filled with water to trap the dust particles. As the drywall finisher sands, the vacuum sucks the dust through the screen into the canister. To find out if vacuum sanders work, a drywall finisher agreed to wear this air monitoring equipment while sanding with traditional methods and with the vacuum control method. This demonstration was carried out by the Engineering and Work Practices Controls Work Group, a joint initiative of the Center to Protect Workers' Rights and the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health. The group's mission is to identify and evaluate engineering and work practice controls in the construction industry. Research by the Center to Protect Workers' Rights found drywall sanding exposures four times OSHA's permissible exposure limit or PEL, for total dust. These exposures may place drywall finishers at higher risk of developing respiratory problems. Product MSDSs show drywall compounds may contain crystalline silica. Crystalline silica can cause silicosis and lung cancer. Manufacturers recommend using ventilation to reduce exposures. Respirators are considered a last resort when other control measures are not feasible. In the NIOSH CPWR demonstration, researchers compared total dust exposures generated by traditional hand sanding, traditional pole sanding, hand sanding with the vacuum control, and pole sanding with the vacuum control. Let's look at the results. As the sanding generates dust, the air monitoring instrument measures airborne levels of total dust. These exposures are represented visually on the scale at left and numerically on the scale at top. The measurements are in milligrams per cubic meter. As the exposure goes up, the bar and the number goes up. Notice that when the exposures exceed the visual scale's range, the numbers on the scale at top continue to display changes in exposure. Also notice that the yellow marker on the scale at left corresponds to 15 milligrams per cubic meter, OSHA's limit, or PEL, for total dust or particulate not otherwise classified. Now let's see what real-time monitoring shows us about drywall sanding with and without vacuum controls. Pole sanding without controls produces high levels of total dust. These exposures are represented visually on the scale at left and numerically on the scale at top. This level exceeds OSHA's PEL for total dust. When the finisher wears dark overalls, you can clearly see the dust from traditional pole sanding settle on him. Now let's look at pole sanding with the vacuum. Notice how low the measurement is barely showing on the exposure scale compared to the level reached by pole sanding without controls. In this situation, when the finisher wears dark coveralls, you see very little dust. Traditional hand sanding may cause higher work exposure to dust than pole sanding. Watch the measurement at left. It's off the scale. The numerical scale at top shows measurements exceeding OSHA's PEL for total dust by four to eight times or more. 
With the vacuum sander, hand sanding produces levels roughly one-third the PEL. Look at the scale at left. What did the NIOSH CPWR demonstration show? First, sanding without the vacuum controls produces high levels of total dust. This dust may be a health hazard to the drywall finisher and to bystanders in the area. Second, vacuum sanding devices decrease the concentrations of total dust 10 to 20 fold during sanding. This exposure reduction to potentially lung damaging dust would benefit the health of exposed drywall finishers and bystanders. Finally, using drywall vacuum sanders could reduce cleanup costs while protecting building occupants, equipment and furnishings from dust. Whatever drywall contractors and finishers can do to reduce exposures to health hazards will mean a reduction in occupational illnesses and disabilities. In turn, this means greater lifelong productivity, lower worker compensation costs, and lower health care and social security disability costs. If you would like more information on how to find drywall dust control equipment, you can receive a drywall dust control fact sheet just contact the Center to Protect Workers' Rights 